know what it is. JD Kiss, you know what I mean? I'm about to take over. But we need even here nor there. Y'all see what's going on. And it's all thanks to my big homie DWI. He holding it down on all the stations with the Matrix. You know what I mean? Blasting off nothing but exclusive good music. So make sure y'all stay tuned. DWI, keep holding me down. DWI Radio, blasting off real big. The Matrix, you hearing it first from your boy J.D. Kiss, and it is what it is. Kiss my ass. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm dislike. <laughs> I'm starting to dislike how <laughs> the adults are acting worse than the kids mm-hmm. out here. <laughs> Sorry. You said you're starting to dislike the adults are acting worse than the kids. Yeah, in terms of behavior. Yeah. Can you explain more? I felt like when I was coming up, I respected adults as being adults. And I think it got something to do with the culture because music, hip hop. And, um, you know, the fashion, all that is like together now. Like our parents didn't dress like how we dress, you know, at that time <laughs> back in those days. So right, right. I'm feeling like now it's like everything is it's OK that you dress and you play video games like a kid, but you can't be acting like a whole kid, too. Yeah. Right. That's in terms of emotions on, on the Internet, arguing, doing like yeah. childish things. Right. So you're saying more so parents need to be parents and, you know, let the children be the children. Right. Don't let the styles and the culture still trick you out of your, your your role as a parent because yeah. i think they they thinking like because their kids are smarter and more aware of what's going on that oh we like we like besties like mm-hmm. yeah i agree what about i you, can't Chuck? wait to hear what chart yeah i want to hear what chuck says <laughs> I agree with you. Well, you know like bro said you know he, he when he was hitting on the thing about the clothes with the older dudes i looked at myself like man he talking about me? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, but like really like on that on that right there though, like for real, it's like I I look at life differently now, you know, like, you know, being that what I went through in life, mm-hmm. so now I have a whole different outlook, a, 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 a more positive perspective on life now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what I really look at is like the census killings, mm-hmm. the black on black. Mm-hmm. The black, you know, any crime is is messed up. But we, I know us as people, mm-hmm. we got to we we got to just learn to respect the next man's opinion yeah. in life. If, if you let if you respect the next person's opinion in life, then you know it'll be a better. Because if you tell me that this is this, and I said no, this is that, mm-hmm. I can't change your opinion. You can't right. change mine. It's so the best, the only thing I'm saying is if if we if I respect what you say about yes. that, yes. and I take it because I can't change your mind exactly. about something. Yeah. So we got to learn to respect respect, e- respect opinion. each other's opinions in life, oh and we got to move. You know what I'm saying? We got to move accordingly. Like right now at this age, like, yo, I'm 55 years old, right? You know, I'm a grandfather. I got two grandkids. You know, shout out to them. Um, You know, my daughter, Nayada. I love love my people. But at the end of the day, I love people. And we got to learn. It's about communication. Mm -hmm. People got to learn to communicate. Like bro was saying, like, you know, you know, it's like the kids are parallel to the parent now yeah in other words so saying true. that the daughters are hanging in the clubs with the mothers yeah they're and drinking they're smoking together they smoking mother. together you yeah. know and, 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 and okay you know at the end of the day that's not cool like some people will look at me and say well you 55 you still rapping mm-hmm. because that's something that i did but we had that conversation yesterday i want i, I want to bring that up too because we talked about that like the the rapper that was here yesterday billy Ons, we both agree as artists that if you've been making music you know why do you have to stop at a certain age? Like one of the things Billions pointed out was that that's more in our community, like our culture, where we try to place these limitations on people versus us allowing people to continue to make music to the, to the rest of your life. Like, why can't you though? What's, 
who says that we can't continue to make music up until beyond 50, 60? I mean, if that's what your love is and that's your passion, why do you have to stop? To me, music is endless. It's timeless. It's endless. It's, 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 there's no beginning. There's no ending. Right. Like Michael Jackson, if he was alive, he'd make a song he would right still now and be it'd go making, trip, mo- yeah. multiple platinum. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you when you do this about making good music, right, exactly. You make good music. You make I don't I don't care what you do, whether mm-hmm. it's salsa, whether it's merengue or you yeah. know the, the, whatever you do, if you do it to perfection, yep, and you could get the crowd moving. Exactly. They don't care how you old you are. Yeah. They don't care. They don't care what type of what condition you're in. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you might have one leg or something, but mm-hmm. you got them moving. You got them and moving. That's what it's about. It's and about that's it. what it's about. And that's why we have to stop putting these ceilings on people and stop trying to limit them based on society or whatever it is that causes you to say, "Well, you shouldn't do this at this age." Like, what's the limitation though? There's no law that we can't do this or that, or you can't do this and that, you know? And especially, you know how you were just even saying about with the young people, with the mothers drinking, with the daughters and smoking, with the daughters and stuff like that. That's not necessarily always a good thing. You know, when people, I have to say my mom doesn't do drink or smoke or any of that. But one thing about my mom, she always says, I don't do that with you. You know, like I'm, I don't play in your age group. That That's your age group. You know, she's the mother. She's the mother. You're yeah. The I'm the daughter. And right. The, the line was drawn. The, dr- but exactly. the line is not drawn these days. It's not drawn these days. No, the line, the line, the line is not drawn these days. You mm-hmm. know why? Because it's, it, it's not even the, the kids fault. Mm hmm. Because the kids only do what they see the parents do. Exactly. I agree with you the on that. First teachers, the first teacher of a kid is in the, in the home. Mm-hmm. The first of a, 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 a young man's first girlfriend, mm-hmm. first love is his mother. Yeah. A daughter, they first love is their father. Their father, yep. You yep. understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's like, you got to so just true. look at life. When you look at life, you got to look at life from all angles. Right. People, people, they just got tunnel vision. Yes. In life, people got tunnel vision. My mm-hmm. vision, my vision hit all, all cylinders. People That's don't know so that important. about me. That's people good to say that, though. Talk no, about that. Get into yeah, that. Yeah, no, like, I hit on all cylinders. Yes, when yes. I look at life, if, if somebody tell me something, mm-hmm. I don't just look at what they say. Mm. I look around at what they're saying. That's good. Because you can't just have tunnel vision right. in life. And a lot of people just got tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. They, 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 their vision don't expand, it, it beyond. Don't expand mm-hmm. beyond what they see in front of them. Yeah. But what I see in front of me, I look around it. That's good. That's what I do. Yeah. I look around it. You know what? And I don't know what it is about me. But I always pay attention to detail. When people think I'm not paying attention to detail, mm-hmm. I pay attention to everything people say. That is good, too. You know what? And yeah. I take inventory of everything people say to me. Yeah. Because in everything in life, there's significance in everything that a person says to you in life. You drop but you gems. Got, but you got to find, you got to find <laughs> the truth in what a person is telling you. Exactly. I'm, it's just like, it's just dealing with energy. Yeah. You know, you got... Potential energy and kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. Potential energy is what a lot of us have. Mm. It's the energy that's potential is there, Mm -hmm. but it's not kinetic. When the energy becomes kinetic, now it's in motion. Oh, okay. Kinetic energy is energy in motion. Wow. Potential energy is just energy that's there. Okay. Now, me in life, Mm -hmm. my energy is no longer potential. No, no, no longer potential is kinetic. Wow. Okay. You understand what yeah, I'm saying? I'm, I'm pushing forward to do something positive. I, I love that. And so speaking of that, you're pushing forward to do something positive. Yeah. We're going to move into the reason that you're here is to get into your incredible story. And I have to thank you again for trusting me with it because I heard a lot of people saying, oh, I want to do Chuck's story. And you said, no, I want to bring my story to LA Key. And so, yeah. like I said, thank you for trusting me. And I want to get into as much as we can in this time frame. Mm. So I want to get right Right into the beginning of you know NY Chuck. And now, first of all, was that the name that you were going by back when you were a child? Like, where did let's get into you know, that first? NY Chuck came actually in the eighties. Oh, okay. My name in the beginning mm-hmm. was Chuck Ross. Mm-hmm. Everybody in Harlem knows me as Chuck Ross. Okay. Okay. New York Chuck came. 
we was sitting down in the 80s and they was talking about New York Freddy. Mm -hmm. And we was all out of town. Okay. We was doing our thing out of town. Mm -hmm. And so one of the girls from New York, she just came out and said, they call him New York every day out here oh. in North Carolina. So she said, New York Chuck. Mm -hmm. And that name stuck with me ever since. Wow. She just said New York Chuck. Because you know when you're out of town, the out of town is called yeah. you New York. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they yeah. wasn't used to it. So when I brought them out of town with me, mm -hmm. they start saying New York Chuck. Wow. And then it just started off. It and stuck I, with you, right? Yes. Wow. Yes. And then that's the story of how you became New York Chuck. So yeah. let's go now. Now that I know where this name comes from, because I love the name, by the way. Um, yes, I want to get into the childhood of, of New um, NY Chuck. So Chuck, take me on the journey of the beginning of you, like where you grew up, you know, where did you begin, you know, like your journey as a child? Okay. Um, Harlem, stand up. I'm from Harlem. That's no good. Shout out to Harlem. I, I got to say that I'm from yeah. Harlem, you okay. know. Um, Harlem is all I knew all my life. Okay. All right. I was born in Patterson, New Jersey. Okay. I left Patterson when I was about one or two years old. Mm -hmm. And my family moved to Spanish Harlem on the east side over there by Johnson Projects. And I grew up over there and then we moved over to the west side into mm -hmm. Forster Pro. We moved into on Martin Luther King Towers, Forster Projects on 115th between 5th and Lenox. We moved in 1978. Oh, okay. We moved in and I've been there ever since. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's I've nice. I've been there ever since, yeah. Okay. And yeah. how would you say, like, growing up as a child, were you, were you, what type of child was, was in my child? Like, were you the good child? Were I you was the, the black sheep. The black sheep? Yeah, I was the, the black sheep. I was, I was the one that, you know, my father come out on the block and whoop my, you know what, get off the block. I'm holding somebody package, 11 years old. Oh, so your father was in your life as yeah, a child. My father was in my life till he died. Oh, that's good. My mother, even though it was a dysfunctional, a very dysfunctional situation in life, mm -hmm. you know, like I've been through a lot. Like I grew up in the group homes, mm -hmm. like all my life. Really? Yeah. So why did you, how did you get from the parents to the group home? Like what? Um, it was like, I was the black sheep. Okay. And my father always had a saying. He said, I would rather you be in jail mm -hmm. than be on the street and dead. Mm -hmm. So he would have my mother sign me in all these group homes and this and that. That's where I grew up. That's why I know so many dudes in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I could go to any Marrow. neighborhood in Brooklyn and Queen and I know somebody. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because a lot of them came from dysfunctional homes and a lot of them grew up in the group homes as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, we just worked our way up to the big house. Mm -hmm. All them group homes was, was setting us up to end up where I ended up doing 40, doing 26 and a half years in prison. Mm -hmm. That's where all them group homes and stuff left. But see, people don't understand. Like today, you might reach out to your man indirectly, mm -hmm. but they don't understand Mm, when you're going through something. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So you feel like, so being in the group home, because we got to get into, like you said, um, one of the things that people don't know, and that's one of the, I didn't want to put on like social media in the, in the quotes or anything, but that you did 26 years, you said? 26 and a half. 26 years and a half. 18 and a half. Yeah, don't leave out the half, because that, that half. That makes yeah, a difference. That's probably the hardest half, huh? The, ha yeah, the, the <laughs> hardest. I'm going to tell you the worst part of my bed was when I was coming home. Mm -hmm. Because that's when the devil sent everything your way. Mm -hmm. But don't tell us nothing. that yet. You yes. got to tell at the end. Yes. Let's save that for them at the end. Let's yes, talk sir. about what. Okay. So look, you, you did 26 years, but you know, I'm sure all the viewers are wondering how does one get there? Sis, you know, I love you with that, right? Yeah. You, you, my man, wife. Don't leave the half out. Don't leave the half. 26 and a half. Yes, yes. yes. The, the half means a lot. The half is when you have to stop from hurting somebody. Because mm. the devil said everything at you. But like you said, we can get into that. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. We get into that. Yeah, so I said the viewers are, I'm sure they're wondering, how does one get to that place where they do 26 and a half years? So what we're talking about, you you were the black sheep of the family. Mm -hmm. um, in school, how were you? Though, like, you know, did you finish high school or what? what? 
What happened? No, here? actually, I just went back and got my GED. You recently did. I just went back. Well, and congratulations got my GED. to you. I just went back That's and got incredible. my GED about two, three weeks ago. Yeah. I'll be picking up my diploma um, sometime this week. Phenomenal. Yeah, I commend you on that. Yeah, so, what was going on in the teenage years? In the, te- in, in the teenage years, you know, it was like, um, you know, we from the streets. Mm. You know, we grew up, we hopped off the porch early. So the teenage years was a lot of smoking and drinking mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, just trying to stay afloat. Mm-hmm. That's what we did. We was man childs. Mm-hmm. When we was young, a lot of us was taking care of our families, our mothers. And we was only 15, 16, mm. 17. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, I had my mother and father in there, but it was a real dysfunctional situation. Mm. It wasn't the um, the Huxtables. It wasn't none of that. Mm-hmm. It was times when we ain't had nothing to eat. Yeah, I was going to ask you yeah. what made it dysfunctional in your Be- household. Because one was on drugs and one wasn't. Okay. My mother was straightforward, clean, never smoked, never drank, mm-hmm. never did nothing. My father was the opposite. Mm-hmm. All right? And at the a, at a young age, you come in the house, you see your father sitting in the living room with a needle in his arm. Oh, my God. You know, God. That's, that's, that's how I grew up. Oh, yeah. They was there through my whole life. Mm-hmm. But my whole life, I saw my father do my mother dirty. I'm just mm. keeping it real. Yeah, no, this I'm is keep a good it a place band. to talk about it. Yeah. Now, I'm going to keep it a band with you. I saw my father do my mother filthy. Mm. If I ever got to do to a woman what my father did to my mother, I would never be with a woman in my life. Mm. How, long, how long did they stay together? 40 years. 40 years. They remarried, separated. When I got locked up, my father came to see me and I said, listen, man, do me. Take your time. Yeah. It's all right, bro. That's just, you still, it's, it's, you still remember that, you know, that was trauma experiencing that, I'm sure. You know, like you can, like it still touches you to this day. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just a part of my life. Every time I talk about it, it's always going to hit me like yeah. that. Because me, me and my mom, we became best friends mm, that's good and the one thing I, I regret is not listening to her yeah and what are some of the things she told you that you regret not listening to all this shit a loving mother tell you to do mm. all that shit yeah it's, you know that's that's something you go through in life that you would you always been carried with you, you know. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there. Goods production. Yeah. But you know it is what it is. I just I grew up hard, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't give a fuck about shedding tears when I excuse me. I don't care about shedding tears. When I'm emotional, you know, excuse me for, you know, but I don't care about shedding tears when I talk about my mother. Yeah. She deserved all of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah. No, I you up. can continue. You know, that's a, that's now, something. I up, yeah. I, I'm here. Yeah. I made it home. They gave me 46 years, you know. But what I want to ask you this. When did, yeah. We're we're happy there. They're clapping for you. You made it out. But I want to know when did you get taken away from her? At what age were you taken away from your mother? Where you didn't twenty 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 six mm. twenty six yeah twenty six years. So you were yeah. twenty six years old. I was twenty six, and you yes. were taken away from her. Yeah. Are your parents still alive? No, nah, I told you I lost them. At what age were you when you lost them? And my my father died when I was like. 48. Okay. 
not mm-hmm. too long ago. Not too long ago. Yeah, not it? too long yeah. ago. And, and, and then and what then about your my mom? My mother died. She died right after him. Oh, so she just recently died too. Yeah, like and you know, not recent, but, but you know, I was I you was said you're fifty five, you I'm said I'm fifty five. And you lost him at forty eight? So they haven't been dead ten years. No, I think you was 48? I had to be younger then, right? Oh, yeah. I had to That's be what younger. I'm saying. You must Because I was in the Supermax. I was in Supermax in North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, they kept me in the Supermax. I was in there 18 and a half years. Okay, when they died. Yeah. Okay. I was in Supermax. And when my father died, the chaplain came to my room. Mm. The lieutenant, he said, he said, Green, um, the chaplain won't talk to you. you know, the lieutenant came and said, the chaplain won't talk to you. Mm-hmm. I went, they said, your father died. I said, all right, boom, all right. You know, you mourn that. Mm-hmm. You go through that shit, you yeah. know. But it's different when your mother go. Especially you being close to yeah, her. It, it's different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's different. So, you know, but like I said, you know, that's part of life. But that woman took care of me. Mm. She made sure I was good. How often were you seeing her when you were locked up? I saw my mother two times. The whole time? She came to see me on Supermax the first time. Mm. And I walked out. And they keep me in full restraints. The chains was all around my ankles, my waist with the block on it, behind my back. And I walked out and she just broke down. Mm. You know, that's... I don't care how old you was. If she was still alive right now, I'm still her baby. Yes. Yes. I don't care how old you are. No matter is. how if old you are. If your mother's alive and she got yes. her right sense, yeah. you steal her baby. Yeah. So, you know, you know that's 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 what it was, you know? Mm-hmm. I salute my mother. I love her, yo. That's my yes. people. Yes, yeah. that's a blessing and that to have that relationship. A lot of people, even though you talked about, you know, going through so much in your childhood, the beautiful part is that you did have a relationship with your mom. Yeah. And that's 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 something that they can never take away from you. Let's get into um, you let me know, basically, teenage years, you drinking, smoking, getting into a lot of different things. What led you on? How did you get into 26 and a half? Years. How did you serve that many years? How? What? Mm-hmm. The case. How I caught the case. Yes. How did you catch that case? <laughs> okay. I got a lot of money in Harlem. Okay. A whole lot of money. Mm-hmm. All right. When you mentioned Chuck in Harlem on certain blocks, mm-hmm. it light the whole block up. Mm-hmm. But on every block, a light lights up. Mm-hmm. Because on every block, every hood, every project, somebody know Chuck. Mm-hmm. And they love Chuck. That's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was getting, we was getting money. You know, I, I messed with a lot of the dudes. Like a lot of the dudes, they got documentaries out on Do Wop, on T Ferg, D Ferg, on um, even Poe. Mm-hmm. Even even though he did what he did, and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to just keep it real. That's my man. I know I knew him before he was Alpo. I knew him when he when he was Alberto. Mm-hmm. All right? But he did what he did, and that's that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the gangster lose all of them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The Papooses. The, you name them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's certain names I want to name, but I ain't going to even name it. But I'm going to name my man, he was my nigga Joe. Okay. Lil Joe, you name them names. Mm-hmm. Them names like, like them names, like that name I just named. That 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 name will light up the whole city. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because where I was, certain people there put me there in the position I was in. So mm-hmm. I was, if I was in that position, you know what position they was in. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah, we got a lot of money, and I was down south. I was in North Carolina. My man Joe. You know, shout out Taste of Seafood Restaurants, House of Seafood, all that. That's my big bro. Love him to death. You know, um, he caught his time. He think I think he did like nineteen or twenty. Mm-hmm. He did nineteen or twenty years, and then in, in like a week before he got locked up, me and him was talking, mm-hmm. and then I told him, I said, "Won't you just, you know?" Go, leave and break out, you know, he wound up getting 
knocked and all that. He went, did his time. You, you know, said he got knocked? Okay. Yeah, he got knocked, went that to means the feds. Okay. He went to the feds. He did about 19, 20 years stand up. Mm-hmm. Good, good dude, all mm-hmm. the way stand up live, second, second fed, fed bid or what stand up. Mm-hmm. Give me. And um after that, I was on my own. Cause he was the only dude that took care of me. So but me, I know, I know, I know how to. I know how to shake and bake mm-hmm. because he introduced me to a lot of good people mm-hmm. and they introduced me to a lot of good people. Like in Harlem, you got Harlem dudes mm-hmm. and then you got Harlem dudes. Mm-hmm. We were the Harlem dudes. Okay. Meaning underground, we like octopus. We can stretch our hands anywhere. Mm-hmm. In Harlem, you couldn't go in any block in the 80s and just stand up on the corner. Now, nah. mm-hmm. Chuck, I could go in most of them blocks. You know why? Because I dealt with them. Mm-hmm. The ones that don't know me, their parents know me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, anyway, when he left, I got back on my feet. I went down to North Carolina, and we was bubbling. We was getting money. Mm-hmm. We was doing our thing. I'm pushing phones, Porsches. Try, all, all in, we, we, we up. We doing our thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I went back to New York. I went back to New York, and I left my man, my Porsche. Mm-hmm. I left him. I had two. I had a blue one. I had a blue 944 at the time, and I had a gold 944. Mm-hmm. And I left him the gold one. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going back to New York. He had the gold one. Mm-hmm. He wound up going to make a sale to some dudes from Virginia and Baltimore. Mm-hmm. I'm in New York. The police followed him. They following the dudes from Virginia and Baltimore. My man going to make the sale, they follow him. Mm-hmm. They get to the hotel. Another dude saw the police following them and followed the police. Mm-hmm. So when the police was creeping in the hotel, the dude ran in the hotel, ran upstairs to see the police followed y'all. Mm-hmm. My man Boogie. Okay. All right? Mm-hmm. My man run, Boogie, leave. Left my porch in front of the hotel. Mm. The dudes from Baltimore and all that, they get locked up. They get caught with all the hair on. They get locked mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. What they do is they say the dude who the heroin belonged to, that's his car. Oh. It was my car. Ah. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now I'm in New York. A year later, I never forget, I was talking to Y from the Rough Riders. Mm-hmm. And, and X was in the back seat sleep. And Y saw me. It was around four or five in the morning. And Y, we was all coming from the party. Mm-hmm. And Y hit the horn. And I pulled over and we pulled over. We stopped in front of St. Nick Projects and we talked for about an hour. Mm-hmm. We talked for about a whole hour. And the police pulled up. It turned daylight. The police pulled up and the police said, whoop, whoop, move the cars. You know, the cars was in the move the cars. Yeah. So while I got in the car, I ran to my car to give them dap and hug them. Mm-hmm. When I did that, the police said, oh, you want to shake people's hands? <laughs> he said, you in the white car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at your pain, yo. Yo, yo. yo. I'm like, yo, real. He said, you in the white car. He said, put your keys on top of the hood. Mm. They got out, took my license plate, I mean, my own registration mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. They went back to their car. I'm looking through the rear view mirror. Now, my, my girl was with me. Okay. This this woman wound up staying with me 23 years for oh, my wow. 26 years. Amazing. That's another story. Mm-hmm. Anyway, she was in the car with me and I took my jury off. I saw both of the police get out the car. When I saw that, I took my jury off and everything. Make a long story short, they locked me up. I went down south. They extradited me to, um, I stayed on Rackers Island for about seven, eight months. Okay. That's where I became affiliated. Mm. I stayed there around seven or eight months, you know, and on. Um, I became a part of the movement, you know, mm-hmm. the on um, blood movement. Oh, in prison. In prison, yeah. I would never become a blood on the street. I said I would never do that, mm-hmm. you know, and on. Um, what 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 inspired you to want to get into that though? Again, um, in prison. 
it was the movement at the time. You know, it was a lot of um, separation. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of um, disrespect, a lot of racism. Mm -hmm. You know, and they looked, they was looking down on all the blacks. Mm -hmm. See, my name, I, I did a lot of time. Like I told you, I grew up in the system. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, I was in Katsaki, Elmira. I was on Clinton, Attica. I was everywhere. Mm -hmm. They called me natural. I was a god body. We was all five percenters. My name was natural in 20 a lot. You know, in it all. was Islam then? Yeah, I was a five percenter. Oh, okay. I was a five. We all was five percenters. Okay. Most of the bloods today were five percenters at one time. Oh, the okay. old ones, especially and that the means old ones Muslim. my age. No, that means God. Oh, okay. So that's not that's not affiliated. That's not Just Muslim. So we, that okay. means that you they they look they 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 the five percent nation is like, you know, um, the five percent nation is like um five percent of the own population mm -hmm. that know who the true and living God is. They say that they the true and living God is a spook and can to be seen by the physical eye mm -hmm. of a guy as known as the blood suckers, the poor, and all that. But you know, that's what they believe in. They believe okay. that the black man is God. Okay. The Muslims at one time, like under under Elijah Muhammad, they would say that, you know, they would talk against the white man. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X is the one that changed that. Am I mm -hmm. right? Malcolm X is the one that changed that. When he went to pilgrimage over to the Holy City and he made it all right, he said the white man is our brother. Mm. But the five percenters, they said the white man is the devil. Mm -hmm. That's what that's about. Okay. But that's that's what we were part of. That was a prison thing. Okay. You know, it was worldwide. Okay. It's worldwide. Wu Tang, yeah. all that shout out to the Wu, all of them. It was worldwide. But mm -hmm. you know, yeah. But um, and you're out of that now, though, right? The five percent. Yeah, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, oh, I'm okay. not five percent. Okay. I'm now, blood. Oh, okay. You're yeah, blood now. Yeah, I'm blood. I'm, 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 when I became blood, that was stamp solidified. That was, oh, gotcha. That, yeah. Oh, okay. So that's so. Before that, you were the five percent. So then, yeah. okay, you, you're still. So I want to take you back. So you're still telling me why you yeah. were inspired to get into that and the and blood. Then, yeah. Oh, you. I thought you. You wanted me to finish. Tell you about the twenty six. And then we switched into the, yeah. Oh, so while you were talking, because you were saying like yeah. you had got into the blood, and I'm just like, yeah. well, what inspired that though for you to even get into that? Yeah, you know, um, I'm gonna tell you something. I was always for my people. Mm -hmm. Anywhere I go, even when I was a young dude, mm -hmm. another race couldn't do nothing to my people. When I got on the island, and all my homies, but see. You got dudes that blood make who they are, mm -hmm. and you got dudes that make blood what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the dudes that made blood what it is. Mm. I stood on that. Mm. I, they done put me in houses with a hundred Latin kings, and I was the only blood in there. And I went in the house, and they said, are you blood? Yes. Mm. My name Chuck. Mm -hmm. Anybody know that name? I stand 10 toes. I don't get that's bit like me on this radio faking right now. Now I ain't doing none of that. Mm -hmm. I ain't doing none of that. Mm -hmm. And I got all my work, paperwork, indictments, mm -hmm. PSIs, everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why Harlem showed me the love it showed me when I came home. Because I did it the right way. Mm -hmm. Even though what I did was wrong. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it got me, I paid my dues. Mm -hmm. A lot of dudes don't know what oppression is. They lay in a room sleeping on concrete for 15, 16 days when they got the AC on and it's freezing outside and all you got on is underwears and t-shirt. Wow. 15 days. That's what they did to us. Wow. I, everywhere I went, I started some of the biggest riots that ever happened in them states. Mm. See me, I never rocked in New York that much. I was always an OT nigga. What's so, that? All the time. Out okay. of town. Okay. I was always an out of town dude. Mm -hmm. I never really did my thing in New York like that. I did mm -hmm. in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But most at the end of the 90s, I was out of town. Mm -hmm. I was moving out of town. Mm -hmm. So when I caught my time, now I see the bloods, they always came to me mm -hmm. in my projects. They always came to me and asked me, did I ever want to be blood? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They always asked me, did I want to be blood? Mm -hmm. And I always said, no. I said, mm -hmm. I'll never be blood. Mm -hmm. And the dude that was running it at the time, he would always pull up on the block. Chuck, I want you to be. He said, Chuck, you get money. You got the, you got the shooters with you. You got this. You got your rock with us. We taking over New York. Mm. And I said, no. But in the end, I did it on my time. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it was huge. When I came home, it was huge. You know what I'm saying? Frost and all of them came home. All that was huge. Mm-hmm. 
when dudes like us came to the, we was it was huge because mm-hmm. we wasn't just we wasn't just oh, we was getting to the bag. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We we was getting to the bag, mm-hmm. so that was kind of huge. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's what made me come. They our people was getting dogged. Mm. They was oppressing us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I, a lot of the bros I dealt with, powerful, on um, Lacey, or um, um, shout out to them, or um, 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 let me see, cool. You know, a lot of the dude, MK, a lot of the homies on um, Dizzy, my big homie Dizzy, a lot of the homies on um, that I dealt with, you know, like, big is, you know, a lot, a lot of the homies, man, it's like, um, it's, it's, it, it, it's different. It's different, man. You know, the movement is so... I don't care who it is. I don't care what manner of people it is. I don't care how strong it is. I don't care who they are. Mm-hmm. You know what I learned about black people? Mm-hmm. When we come together, nothing or no one can stop us. us. Yes. Look what we do in sports. Mm-hmm. Everything we do in sport, everything we do, we dominate it. Mm-hmm. I listen to these podcasts with these dudes talking about, uh-oh, they don't mess with New York this and New York Crips and New York Bloods and all. You will never come on this side of the map and say that. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you is. You ain't coming on this side talking like that. Mm. You are not coming on, you're not coming in New York talking. You're not even going to stand in a, a dude from New York presence. That's a real, that's real right and talk like that. Because mm. we shaking. Mm-hmm. For real. Mm-hmm. We shaking. Yeah. So Chuck, let's get back into this. So you're in, you're in prison right now, yeah. right? You became blood. Yeah. In prison. And so what happens in prison? So do you get out? What's the next step with this story? You so we know your blood. You shifted from the five percenter. You repping for your people. So then, what happens? Well, they extradite me to North Carolina. We was in, all of us was in OBCC on the island. Mm-hmm. We was in OBCC, MK, Tweet, Eastwood. We always did. Mm-hmm. Um, Big up the D Wiz from Fort Greene, my man D Wiz. You know, it was a bunch of us there. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the heavy hitters. We was all there. Like, and um, it's like when they shift me to North Carolina, I ask certain people, like, yo, what's the situation? Like, yo, you know, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because mm-hmm. me, I'm going to take this wherever I go. Mm. This who I am. Where, I, where if they put me on the moon today or tomorrow, when you get there, it's gonna be a set of bloods up there. That's Martians. Mm. Wherever I go, that's what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Every state I went in, Ohio. I did it in Ohio. I did it in Carolina. This every, is every deep, state. though. I, can I ask you this, though? You know, because I don't know anything about blood. You yeah. know, um, so what makes you go so hard for this? Like, what is the, your connection so much to it? I understand you said that you know you're for the people, but this is something you're not going to walk away from. Nah, ever. you know why I'm not going to walk away from it? I've been blood since day one. Mm. You know why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not walk away from it? Mm-hmm. Because this is what I am. Mm. I am what I am and all that I'm not, I'll never be all as well. This is what I am. And what is that when they say blood? What does that actually mean? Brotherly love, override oppression, destruction. Mm. Okay. What we say is brotherly love override oppression, destruction. Mm-hmm. We know what oppression does. Mm-hmm. Oppression causes a destruction amongst the people, mm-hmm. but brotherly love overrides the oppression that causes destruction. Mm-hmm. So that's what we stand for. Like we say, peace, almighty peace, blood. This first generation, I, 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 I bang home in first generation. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Mm-hmm. So every all the principles, you know, all the principles on the on on the constitution. I, I, that's what I stand for. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I did 18 and a half years in the, in, in the Supermax from the state to the Fed. I didn't really go into the federal Supermax, mm-hmm. but they had me housed. And um, I think it was a drop down program because they always do that to me. Every yard I go on there, put me on lockup for a week or two weeks. They scream me, SIS to scream me, then they push me out to the yard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I never had Fed time. Mm-hmm. I caught Fed time in the Feds. Mm. You see the cut on my face and all that? Uh-huh. I caught fed time in the feds. Oh, wow. So one of the dudes 
that cut me in Carolina, you know, one of the dudes that cut me in Carolina, when I got to the feds, soon as I ran into his man, I almost killed him. Mm-hmm. I ran into a dude. He's like, that's my man. I said, oh, you know him? Mm-hmm. I said, hold this. Tell him, tell him Chuck sent this to him. Mm-hmm. That's how I was moving. I, I was moving like that all the way till I walked out the door. Okay. All the way till I went home. Wow. So let's let's talk about this. One of the things you told me to, initially, what was your initial sentence that they gave you and what they tried to do? Let's talk about that. Okay. Now, when they extradite me from Rackers Island, they mm-hmm. extradited me in 97. Mm-hmm. They extradited me in 97. I know it was the winter time. Mm-hmm. Okay. They took me to the court building, the extradition team. They was from Kentucky. They came and got me. The last person when I saw was this little girl from my building. Mm-hmm. That's the last person I saw that I knew from New York. Mm-hmm. And when I was getting in the van, I told her, I was like, what's up? How you doing? I said, tell everybody I love them. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm gone. That's the last thing. Mm-hmm. I went to Carolina. They offered me five years. When I went, they um gave me my indictments and everything. They offered me five years. Mm-hmm. So what I did, I spit at the district attorney. Mm-hmm. And I told them, I said, I'm from New York. I don't do that. You could Google that, Durham, the Durham Harrow Sun newspaper, 1998. Mm-hmm. I spit at the district attorney and I said, we don't do that. I'm from New York. <laughs> Put 12 in the box. Let's go. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was talking that gangster. And what does that mean? 12, 12 in the box mean put 12 jurors to judge me. Mm. Oh, they judge me, all right. Mm-hmm. Them Carolina people went in that, in that jury room for 10 minutes, came out and gave me 46 years. Wow. They didn't even deliberate. Ah. They went inside. They went and said, know what the DA kept saying? He's from New York. Mm. He's from New York. This is what the DA kept saying. And I'm going to tell you something else that's great. Mm. My father testified against me. Really? Yeah, my father took the stand and testified against, against me. Against you? Yeah. Wow. yeah my How father. did that make you feel? You know, like, when you when, when you in this game, mm-hmm. that's just what it is. Mm. See when you spell the when you spell the word game, you can't spell game without me. Mm. So yeah. when I joined, when I jumped in the game, mm-hmm. you spell game G A M E. Mm-hmm. You can't spell game without me. Mm. So when I jumped in the game, I accepted everything that came with it. Mm-hmm. So when my father told on me, I accepted that. Mm-hmm. When them dudes told on me, the dudes that got caught with all the hair on in their hand, mm-hmm. they walked in the courtroom, mm-hmm. told on me, and walked out the courtroom back home with their mothers, fathers. They enjoyed their family. Mm-hmm. But me, I stand on principle. I didn't take five years. I took 46 years. My paperwork said life. He, Your husband got it on his phone. Mm-hmm. My paper, my paperwork said life. Mm-hmm. The indictment when I say I just caught the dude, your husband mm-hmm. got that on his phone too. The indictment. Yeah. Everything I talk about, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna show it in black and white. Yeah. I'm not gonna get on this because I know dudes get on here and they get exposed because they lying. Yeah. Like when I talk about North Carolina bloods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the reason that popped. Yeah, let's get into that. Too. Yeah, Chuck, I'm the reason that popped off. And so what we're saying is that you started. The North Carolina Bloods. Yes. I'm going to say, you know, I got to be careful. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to leave it at that. Yeah. My name Chuck. Mm-hmm. That's, that's Stan. Mm-hmm. I'm the one why that state, why all them, why all these dudes from New York ran in North Carolina, I'm the reason. Mm. That's, solic- that's, in, that's, that's in the timeline. Mm-hmm. Who started that. Mm-hmm. That's in stone. Mm-hmm. I'm Donald G. I'm one they trade gangster. That's who I am. I'm Chuck, mm. aka Don Mussolini. That's who I am. You will meet Chuck and you will meet Mussolini because mm. it's two different people. Who is Mussolini? Mussolini. A lot of people don't want to meet him. Mm. <laughs> That's who Mussolini is. I'm 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 Chuck. Mm-hmm. I'm Chuck, aka Don Mussolini. That's a lot of dudes don't want to meet Mussolini. Mm. A lot of dudes they rather meet Chuck. Mm-hmm. Chuck, Chuck deal with nicer, you. The yeah, more... Chuck them deal with you. Okay, that's just like in life. Everybody got God and the, God and the devil in them. Mm-hmm. Like I tell, I tell a lot of dudes, I be like, yo, I ain't got no problem with you. I don't know you. Mm-hmm. But if you got a problem with me, mm-hmm. you the one with the problem. And that's one of my slogans. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with you. Mm-hmm. But if you got a problem with me, you the one with the problem. Yeah. And I stand on that. <laughs> Yeah, Dizzy, 
all of them came to Carolina, mm-hmm. they had to check in with me. Mm-hmm. And they big homies in New York. Dizzy and them had to come and ask for Chuck. Where Chuck at? Mm-hmm. I can name a lot of other ones that came down there and had to ask where Chuck at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chuck, I got to uh, ask you, how did you, you know, being in there that long, what are some of the most difficult moments you would say that you had facing that 46 years initially? I'm going to tell you, when they gave me 46 years, mm-hmm. I didn't care about God. Mm-hmm. Listen when I tell you. Mm-hmm. I was putting that knife in everything moving. Mm. I didn't care about nobody. Police knife. Female police knife. That's who Chuck was. Mm. That's Mussolini. Mm. Yeah, all right, you go with it. My, my name is Vidal O'Neill Green. Prison number 0550460. Do the history. My prison number, Vidal O'Neill Green. Mm-hmm. Federal number 0191422. I got to ask you yeah. why you're speaking on that when you said when you didn't care about anyone when you was in that in the female um, police officers who what what were you so angry about for those that are listening? Like what, what it was going on? You know what it was? It was an anger. Mm-hmm. I just knew I was going to die in prison. You thought you were. Yes, I thought I was going to die in prison. OK, so that's why you were doing that. I, I didn't care about nothing. Mm-hmm. My paperwork said life. Mm hmm. When my mother and them saw that on the computer, my mother almost had a heart attack. It said life when they first pulled me up. Mm. So when you living like that, you don't care about nothing. Mm-hmm. The only ones you care about is those that care about you. Mm-hmm. That's why I always say like the God body, you got to say many shall come, only few shall be chosen. And those are the ones that chose themselves. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like me, I know I became Dr. Phil in the feds, Mm -hmm. sitting down with them little gang members, talking to them, listening to their problems. Mm -hmm. And I always had a solution for them. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm Chuck. That's why you're Chuck. And you got to tell them because our time is winding. But before we get out of here, we're not we're almost there. But how did the time shorten from 46 to 26 and a half years? What happened to bring you there? Okay. In the beginning, they took one case mm-hmm. and they turned it into two cases. They took one case and turned it into two. Mm-hmm. They gave me 220. When I blew trial, they gave me 225 to 279 months for trafficking heroin by possession. In prison? In prison. Okay. That's what they gave me. Mm-hmm. That's 18, that's 18 and a half to 23 years. Mm-hmm. 225 to 279 months mm-hmm. for trafficking heroin by possession. Mm-hmm. And then the judge said, I'm going to run it concurrent. I mean, on consecutive. So I looked at the DA and I said, yo, I looked at, I mean, my lawyer and I said, yo, conse- consecutive. He said 225 to 279 months running consecutive for conspiracy to traffic. Con- con- conspiracy. My lawyer said, hold up, who did he conspire with? Mm-hmm. Nobody took the stand. The police took the stand in my case and said they had no evidence linking the drugs to me, period. Wow. So I just took 46 years. Mm. I took that. Mm-hmm. I took that on the chin. That's I, I didn't got stabbed up. You see all the stab and cut all stab all up in my face, all that since I've been down, all of my but you know what? If I gotta do it over again, guess what? I'm gonna do it the same way. You know why? Because I took an oath. Mm. I took an oath and I'm gonna stay, I'm, I'm gonna stay in all that. Every every dude that know me listening, that'll listen to this station. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of dudes listening, you know what they saying? That man speaking facts. Mm. I ain't never ducked no wreck. I've never been a troublemaker or always been the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. But when you disrespect blood, Mm -hmm. we shaking. (laughs) We shaking. On the fed yard, that's what they said. My man Prem, God Fisher's son just called me. Mm -hmm. If something happened with his phone, he was going to call him. God Fisher's son, he was in the feds with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But 
you know, it is what it is. Talk about why you're here, Donald Trump. Yes. Let's talk. I about was gonna that. get to that. Yeah, because I was, I when I was locked up, when I was locked up, I kept sending my appeal. I lost my appeals on everything. They had absolutely no evidence. My case was in the fourth di district. The fourth, the fourth circuit is the most conservative circuit in the federal system. Mm -hmm. And my case was in the fourth circuit. I did a lot of. I was in my eighteen and a half years in the supermax. Mm -hmm. I read every law book that they had in the law library. Mm. I could go in a lot of these cases right now and beat them right now. Mm. That's how much lot you educated knowledge. Yourself. Yes, I did. That's incredible. Like I said, I just went and got my GED. Mm -hmm. I just went and got my GED. But anyway, Donald mm -hmm. Trump, they called me and they said, it was four in the morning. Mm -hmm. Big up to my man Lex, the King Latin King Lex. On King Lex, love you. I just spoke to him today. That's my man. He called me when I was on my way down here. Matter of fact, he called me when I was in the studio. Big up to him. He and Hazelton. Mm -hmm. Hazelton or, 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 or USP. That's where I just left him at. I've been home like two years. Tomorrow will be two years for me. Tomorrow. Tomorrow will be two years for me. Congratulations. They came to my room. Mm -hmm. And them people told me, I I'm in the room. It's mm -hmm. like three in the morning. Me and my man up. We just chopping it up. Mm -hmm. and talk. They came to my room. And the CEO said, Green, he had the paper in his hand. He said, pack your bags. You shipping in the morning. So I was like, damn. I said, yo, Lex, I'm out. He said, no, you going home in the morning. This is what the CEO said. <laughs> and I said, well, I just caught nine years. The indictment you got, I just caught nine joints. Wow. I just caught nine joints. He said, he said, um, like, you going home. So I'm like, man, get the F away from my door. Mm -hmm. Right? I said, get the F away from my door. I'm, not, I'm not going nowhere. I just caught nine joints. Now, mine, in the process of me catching the nine years, right? Mm -hmm. They took the case that they did like this, mm -hmm. and they did like this with it. Mm. So it made it 23 years. Mm -hmm. And now I got 22 years in. Mm -hmm. But now I done caught nine years. Mm -hmm. So when my release date came, I'm sitting in I'm sitting in the cell and I just went to the mirror and looked at myself. And I said, if you're not the dumbest dude in the world, <laughs> I said, if you're not, you supposed to be home right now, today. And then Donald Trump passed the first step act. He passed the first step act. Mm -hmm. I fell under the criteria. Mm -hmm. And I went home. I left everything. I left everything. Mm -hmm. I just walked home. I just had on a sweatsuit. I just took my pictures. I left everything. How did you feel? Don't tell me that feeling as you're getting ready and you know you're leaving and you're about to step out. What? How did you feel inside? It still ain't registered yet. Mm. I've been through a lot since I've been home, but it still ain't registered. That you're here. That I'm here. Wow. Sometimes I wake up and I wake up and I think I'm going to wake up in a cell. Mm -hmm. And I wake up and look around. I still call the living room the day room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, when I be, I be, I'm going in the day room to look at TV. I'm talking about the living room. Mm -hmm. I call, I call dinner <laughs> child. Wow, that's because you spend so much time in there. I call dinner child. Wow. This is what the system do. The system, it, it. It manipulates you. And it system, reprograms you. It reprograms you. Be, yeah. You become a product of the of system. Your, yes, of, your, of your environment. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that's, that's, basically, that's basically what happened. Yeah. Well, NY Chuck, it was a pleasure having you sit down with me and just getting into so much of this story. You're an artist. You're a recording artist as well. Yes. Um, since you've been out, you've been making music. Yes. You're on everything, scoring. Yes. You're shooting music videos. Yes. You did big ups to um, the guy that, that I can't think of it right now because I'm so into your story. The guy that you just did the song with, um, the feature, the song, the remix that you guys just did. Oh, Kingpin Bless. No, no, no. No, no, no the song that you guys did, though. The song that you guys did with the guy that passed away. Too Fat. Too you're Fat, about, yes. The you're remix. Too Fat, yes. Yes, yes. Yo, that, believe it or not, I'm getting good reviews on this. Yes, song. so you're... And, and you know, you know, Bless went crazy on it. Everybody, I, Everybody I be around, they singing Bless verse more than mine. I'm looking at them <laughs> like, damn, you my man. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, I just wanted the people to know that you're, since you've been out, you're making music, you're shooting music videos, you're, you know, working on, you know, your own 
situations. I know you've done a lot of features, but you're working on your yeah. own stuff. What do you want to tell people when, before you close out? What is the thing you want to tell everyone? I want y'all to know, like, like I said, I'm from Harlem. I represent the five boroughs, but I'm from Harlem. You know what I'm saying? You know, my man, Bless Biggs from Brooklyn. You know, you could go to my page. You could go to my page, NY underscore Chuck, and follow me on Instagram, YouTube. Um, You know, NY underscore Chuck. You could follow my man, Bless Biggs. His Instagram is on um, Kingpin Bless. You know, Kingpin King Bless Pen. with, with Kingpin. Underscore. Underscore. Two eyes in the king. Two eyes in the king, yes. Kingpin, K-I-I-N-G-P-E-N. And yours is easy. NY underscore Chuck. Chuck. Yes. NY underscore yes. Chuck. You know, we doing, we, me and me and my man Bless, we get ready to hit y'all with something crazy. Look and for we that. We look forward to it. Thank you so much, Chuck. It's been a pleasure. Harlem, stand up. Brooklyn, stand up. New York, stand up. Love yes. y'all. Love y'all.